Plastic recycling is complicated. And that's because whichever bin you pick, globally only around 10% is actually recycled. Another 10% is incinerated, and the rest, at best, ends up in landfills, and at worst, in our ocean. But plastics are so important for modern life, and the very qualities that make them so useful for things like straws or takeout containers also make them an absolute nightmare when it comes to throwing them away. But I have some good news. I partnered with a company called Aduro Clean Technologies because they might have just developed a technology that can help change all that. This is huge. So let's see if we can't figure this all out together. I'm Ricky, and this is 2 Bit Adventure. Aduro Clean Technologies has eight patents and closely guarded secrets from years of research and development. But at a high level, their process can take nearly all waste plastic and using their patented hydrochemolytic process or HCT, break it back into very much of the same feedstock that companies use to create new plastic. Okay, Ricky, we've got these samples coming out of the condenser right now from the reactor. Nice. So this is our polymer skid, uh, we call it R2PE. This is our temperature controls right here. We have our secret sauce in the back and our deionized water, both fed through our positive displacement pump right here. This is our extruder where we feed our polymer in. It acts as both the uh, feeding pump and our melt for it. Into our reactor, uh, time, temperature and pressure. When it comes out, passes through our pressure regulator. Into our chillers, we have two chillers here. They take different cuts. Here you're looking for about C30 to C20 carbon chains. So still liquid, still very valuable, uh, just a heavier molecule. And then out of here, uh, you're getting anywhere from C20 down to C8. And that is feedstock for basically every fuel that we use. But to understand how genius this is, we need to understand the enormity of our plastic waste problem. The problem is not plastic. Uh, plastic is a fantastic material that has come to our lives to change it forever. The way that we handle at the end of the life cycle of the plastic is the problem. Unlike the aluminum in aluminum cans, there's no plastic on the periodic table. Plastics are a wide range of synthetic materials that use a variety of polymers as a main ingredient. And there's no one type of plastic. There are all sorts of different types based on the properties you're after. Lucky for us, the nice people in the plastic industry came up with a convenient way to categorize them. See this recycling logo with a number inside? That represents the resin identification code numbered from one to seven. Except that's not the recycling logo. This is confusing, right? Between 1950 and 2017, we produced around 9.2 billion tons of plastic, with more than half of that since 2004. Just this year, we'll produce more than 400 million tons of plastic. That's about the weight of the entire world population in plastic. This is our regular water bottle or Coke bottle. This is made of PET and it's a number one. PET is most easily recyclable by means of hydrolysis or glycolysis. Then we had uh, number two as a high density polyethylene, which could be uh, shredded and uh, easily mechanically recycled. And then we had PVC, low density polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene. As the number increases, the complexity of recycling actually increases. I found that there are several different types of plastic recycling very broadly divided into two major categories, mechanical and chemical recycling. You have a lot of people who just take pieces of plastic, they melt them again, cast them in a new shape, and we call that mechanical recycling. You do actually nothing to the, the basic chemical structure. And it's great because that requires the least energy and uh, it's the shortest way to circularity. Mechanical recycling involves physically separating the different types of plastics by picking them out. You then melt the plastic or dissolve them in a solvent and then reshape it into new plastic products. When you say mechanical recycling, this is what we're talking about, right? What do we have here? Yes. So what happens is, let's say we have a starting material. We take them, shred them, melt them, and make pellets like this so that they could be re-molded into certain other forms. But this has some challenges. For one, you have to separate like plastics and can't mix them. Just in this one bottle, there are three types of plastic. The bottle itself, the lid and seal, and the wrapper. <laughs> Just imagine the work it would take to sort all this out from a pile and how many kilograms of material you'd actually have when you're all said and done. Mechanical recycling 
Uh, the plastic is not infinitely recyclable like metals like aluminum or iron because with every time you try to recycle your heating and melting it which degrades its property. Apart from that, you, you may also get like undesirable colors. So this might have been white and red and green and blue and like all these different all things that different we see. Colors. But when you mechanically recycle them, you get this. Oh, gray color or maybe black color. Or maybe black, something in there. This is actually recycled polypropylene. This is what it looks like. We mentioned that gray color from all the various inputs that it had. And here we've got polyethylene, again, recycled. This is the traditional mechanical approach to recycling. And this is what the, you would start with if you were building a new toy or something else from this plastic. Also, any debris like ketchup left in that old ketchup bottle is a huge no-no. Not to mention any colorants or fillers that have been mixed into the plastic. So mechanical recycling is really sensitive to residue and contaminants. And it only works for certain types of plastics, largely numbers one and two on the resin index. Then there's chemical recycling, where you put plastics through a series of chemical reactions that change their chemical structure, converting them into something else. And this is where EduroClean Technologies comes in. They are a Canadian startup tackling one of the hardest problems in plastic recycling head on. Recycling mixed, dirty, and wet plastic waste with minimal pre-processing. This is basically the leftover materials that is left after the good stuff was already taken out, and it turns out, there's a lot left over. The company started as Duro Energy Inc. with the goal of reducing the oil industry's environmental impact by upgrading bitumen and heavy oils while increasing the economics. We keep a nitrogen blanket on the uh, bitumen tank. Bitumen's hard to pump and hard to move, so an extra, a little bit of extra head pressure is not a bad thing. It gets drawn into the syringe pumps right here, and that's kind of the whole process, uh, point of the skid, is to make it easier. Do you have a sample of bitumen that we could just... I did get a little bit on me. Um, it will get everywhere, so I'm gonna wash my hands off. I'm not gonna get this on my hands. Trevor's still washing it off, but this is how the company started dealing with this bitumen right here, nature's polymer. This stuff just naturally occurs and is quite difficult to deal with. <laughs> Imagine how difficult that has to be to force through a system for treatment through pumps and just how gunky this is. But that's how it all started, dealing with this. And then they realized, if we can deal with this, we can deal with plastic. And that was the game changer, the Eureka moment. They discovered that glycerin could play a role as a source of hydrogen equivalence, so they tried adding glycerin to the reaction with the bitumen. The results were amazing. They called this process hydrochemolytic technology or HCT and patented it. The molecules in the upgraded bitumen were stable and didn't require the extra and costly and environmental challenge of hydrogenation. So here's how HCT works. First, solid waste is shredded, mixed with water, the catalyst, and a source of hydrogen equivalents like glycerin, and fed into a continuous flow reactor. In the reactor, log polymer chains are deconstructed using heat, water, a catalyst, and other safe process additives like glycerin. These chemical reactions convert the solid plastic into liquid hydrocarbons or oils that separate from the water floating on top of it. Any residues or impurities have no impact on the desired product, leaving a highly valuable and pure oil that requires minimum to no post-processing. But here's the real kicker. You can tweak multiple controls like temperature, pressure, flow rate, and others to fine tune the process for the type of feed material you put in and the type of product you want out. You can also use multiple process additives to replace glycerin such as ethanol, cellules, and even ethylene glycol from PET. So Aduro's ingenious design takes advantage of the differences in the activation energy of different plastics to process them separately one by one without having to physically separate them before being processed. For example, the deconstruction of polystyrene has lower activation energy and is processed in the first reactor at milder temperatures than the rest. The more resistant plastics like polyethylene and polypropylene pass through unaltered to the next two reactors where the temperature is increased for those. The product is sent to a three-phase separator, separating the gas from the water, solid, and liquid. The main products, which are liquid oils, come out the top side of the reactors and are stored in tanks, while the water is treated to remove any remaining unaltered plastics and other impurities before being recirculated 
into the process. Contaminants for other technologies, such as cellulose from paper, are actually helpful because they convert into chemical agents that take part in the hydrochemolytic process. So why does this matter? The HCT system is specifically designed to process polyolefins. According to the EPA, 70% of municipal plastic waste is polyethylene, polypropylene, or polystyrene. So Duro can address that market. Unlike most other recycling technologies, HCT can handle mixed polymers and other components as feedstock and process them as they come out without extensive pre-processing. It works at lower temperatures up to 400 degrees Celsius, much lower than most other processes that need higher temperatures and consume more energy. This also results in lower charring and less gases produced. So the natural next question has to be, if this tech is so great, why isn't it everywhere? Well, for starters, Aduro is a startup and they haven't reached commercial scale just yet. Although we started with bitumen and we've been performing uh, testing and experiments on bitumen, we were very much surprised by the waste plastic application because we weren't aware how much awareness for waste plastic is out there. When we start publishing our results, there was immediate uh, feedback, positive feedbacks. Companies came back and says, let's test this, let's test that. They invited me to their facility in London. And while they don't have a full blown commercial scale plant just yet, they do have what they call their R2, the continuous flow reactor, which is online and working. And they plan to build a scalable next generation reactor by the end of 2024 or early 2025. One thing I immediately realized when I met with the team is how passionate they are. These are professionals that used to work in other industries, sometimes more lucrative industries like oil and gas, but they've all come here to do some of the best work of their lives. Being in this team, I have never met um, a team so dedicated, so motivated, um, putting in so much hours, um, not asking, you know, for, for keeping or holding true to a certain um, time schedule. And one thing the team made really clear to me is how important it is to nail the technology at each step along the way and not rush things. This is an experimental device, right? So what, what we have done is we have not kind of integrated everything like post-processing or automatic uh, product separation. Right now we do see challenges, right? Like sometimes uh, polyethylene was waxy versus polypropylene is more like a liquid product. And if we don't understand those challenges, we'll never be able to incorporate, right? And you don't want to go to a, a next scale, which is much larger and then figure out, oh, we, we have to modify this. Especially on the R&D unit, it's not uh, what you know. It's important that what you don't know, right? To continue the progress of research and development and all the next steps, the company went public three and a half years ago and is listed in the OTCQX market as ACTHF. Their early partners are the exact customers that they're gonna need in the future, which is really nice. So Dura can leverage their resources, industry know-how, and experience to further develop their technology. Why can't we standardize? I feel like we have this wild west of every company with their own proprietary blend to some semblance of a standardized system where plastic is produced by the producers with the intent of circular economy. Well, there are several initiatives out there uh, currently underway. The Global Treaty on Plastic Pollution, this is a UN-led initiative that is looking for a legally binding agreement to address the full life cycle of plastics from design to production to disposal. Government policy is also playing a big role. The European Green Deal includes language requiring that all plastic must be recyclable by 2030 and all new packaging must include bio-based or recycled content. The Consumer Goods Forum is a global organization that brings consumer goods retailers and manufacturers together to collaborate on strategic initiatives. One of those initiatives is the Golden Design Rules for Packaging Design to ease recycling and reduce plastic waste through harmonizing design principles. The only way we're gonna actually tackle our plastic waste problem is by increasing the volume of plastics that we actually recycle, that way we produce less of it. This requires all kinds of activities, such as rebalancing responsibilities back to the brands or ensuring they design and make their products, taking into account what happens at their end of their useful lives. Companies like Aduro can actually help with this by lending a helping hand to brands, by making it easier and more effective to recycle previously unrecyclable waste, and by providing on-site solutions to manage plastic waste on site, helping transform their companies into zero waste organizations or closer to that. 
They can also collaborate with organizations that already recycle to take on streams that they could not take before. So yes, we do use more plastic than ever and only about 10% is currently recycled, which means the rest of it is ending up in landfills and our oceans. And the problem has always been that all the investment has always been on the production side. Big billion dollar companies making plastic better for various use cases, a better potato chip bag. But there's never really been enough investment on what we do with plastic at the end. That's why I'm so glad that companies like Aduro are actually addressing that problem. Taking in waste plastic, not washed out, just plastic the way we all dispose of it and actually finding a way to treat it and return it back to the original material to make plastic all over again. We can enjoy plastic for the reasons that we love it. It is incredibly useful in our modern lives, but we might finally have a way to have a circular plastic sustainable economy. And that, I think we can all agree, can't come soon enough. All right, that's a quick look at Aduro and how they're actually solving the plastic waste problem. And if you thought that video was cool, check out this one next. I think I nailed it. Yes, you did. <laughs>